My role is being the narrator. The films are covering a multi-stage process on how we get from here to there. So the first thing is to work out where there is. So we need the more sophisticated instrumentation in the telescopes to be able to find out not only which stars have planets, but which of those planets are Earth-like and in the habitable zone and have an atmosphere. Then we have to go to the next stage, which is how to get there, which is obviously in this stage, fusion. Sure, further down the line we'll go for antimatter, as in Star Trek, but fusion is a good short-term method, and that'll get us to anywhere between 10 and 30% of the speed of light. Now, in the living universe, the starship is piloted by an artificial intelligence, and that voice comes from a real scientist, Professor Tamara Davis. She is a genuine scientist, in fact, an astrophysicist. Artificial intelligence has a few advantages. One is that you don't have to carry huge amounts of supplies to be able to keep the human alive. The other one is that it can be on duty 24 hours a day and the ship can be so much smaller and lighter because instead of having to supply all the infrastructure to keep humans alive, you just have the electricity to keep the AI alive. Then comes a big problem of what is the AI going to do? Will it be smart enough to make decisions on its own? In that case, what if it decides just to come back and not go anywhere or invade the Earth or go and mate off with another AI that it found on another starship? And then how to deal with mistakes? Because that's one of the great skills that humans have. We can recognise that we've made a mistake and learn from it and not make that same mistake over and over again. And we've got to be able to program that into an AI to the point that it does it by itself. And this is not a trivial task. It'll take half a century. In our body, we've got distributed intelligence. So if I touch something hot, the decision to remove my hand is made not by my skull, but by my spine. And so what we want is distributed intelligent guys like this guy here. So these guys get printed off to suit the environment. So they're made differently for high temperature, for low temperature, for moist environment, for dry, for high altitude, low altitude. And they're printed off atom by atom, layer by layer. So here, with the advanced technology, we're printing off these guys, which have their own power supply and their own intelligence, so they can walk or swim or fly around the planet and then report back to the mothership, which then reports back to Earth 4.7 years later. On Minerva B, the planet that we go to visit about 4.7 light years away, what we find is life in the oceans corresponding to what was in our oceans after the Cambrian explosion, which is when life turned from simple stuff into complex multicellular life. That happened about 540 million years ago. We find something roughly equivalent. People should see this movie at the movies rather than at home because it has been set up for the big movie experience. The CGI is amazing, but you won't see it all unless you can look over here and see a bit, and over there and over there and over there and up and down. And it's just full screen. You do not get the full experience at home. You've got to see it at the movies. Living Universe.